The government, as you heard there, continues to face a barrage of opposition pressure on alleged foreign elections interference. So far, it seems the prime minister's plan to calm concerns isn't exactly working. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau wants a yet-to-be-named special rapporteur to determine if Canada needs an elections inquiry. The opposition, though, is not picking up what he's putting down. They, too, though, are under fire for their criticism of the prime minister and whether it's going too far. Let's bring in our front bench panel of former premiers to weigh in. A former premier of Ontario, Kathleen, Kathleen Wynne, is here. Former Nova Scotia premier Daryl Dexter is as well. And former premier of BC, Christy Clark, is having some audio issues, so we're just working on them, and, and hopefully she'll be with us in moments. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Daryl. Great to see I, you both. I, and here, I hope you can both hear me okay. Uh, we, were, we were convening last week and, and talking about this very issue, and, and this was prior to the announcement from the Prime Minister about the creation of the Special Rapporteur. Um, and both, all three of you had really agreed that there was something, you know, there was more of a response required. Kathleen, I'll start with you. Your, your assessment of the response that, that did come, this creation of the Special Rapporteur. Well, Vashi, as I said last week, I wish it had come earlier. So I'm concerned about that, and I think that's part of the reason that um, it's not being received in the way that it might have had it been earlier. But um, I think it's going to depend on who the person is. Um, the Prime Minister has committed to consulting with the, um, with the opposition parties and looking for names from wherever they might come. Um, I think there's agreement that the person needs to be impeccable in terms of his or her credentials. And so uh, there are, you know, there are good people who could do this. And he is also committed to a public inquiry if that's the recommendation of the rapporteur. So I think it's a good response. I just think it's late. And so I hope that this person gets appointed quickly. Daryl, how difficult do you think it's going to be to find this, uh, to use the Prime Minister's word, I think, uh, unimpeachable uh, individual to, to occupy that position of the special rapporteur, given how far we are into this controversy? Well, I mean, I think there are lots of eminent people, eminent Canadians who could do, uh, who could do this job. And, and I have to say, I, I would go even further with um, some of what uh, Kathleen said. I think it depends on, of course, who that person is, what they, what they bring. Uh, it, but I, I, I'm assuming that there will be some kind of uh, terms of reference that they will work under. Um, he's also, uh, the Prime Minister has also said there would be an oversight agency involved, that there would be a committee of parliamentarians involved. It, it, you know, it... Um, you know, all of those things taken together um, could do the job, uh, but uh, it will depend, uh, as Kathleen said, on, uh, you know, ex ex what kind of resources are allocated to it, uh, what kind of access they're given uh, to briefings. There's, there's a lot we don't know about, uh, you know, how this process will unfold. And uh, so I think the answer uh, to the initial question you put uh, really is. It depends. It depends a lot on what unfolds uh, in the uh, in the coming days as we see who uh, ultimately is appointed and uh, and what kind of resources they have, um, uh, what kind of terms of reference they have. I, I think we have successfully connected with uh, Christy. Hi, Christy. We, we I know we had some audio issues. My apologies. I, I was just act, asking your uh, your co panelists there what their assessment of. Uh, the Prime Minister's announcement of a special rapporteur, kind of the moves he made after our last conversation in which all three of you were calling for something extra to address the issue. Well, I don't know if they could have made a bigger mess of this issue than they have because they started out saying, oh, it's not a problem, it's not really a problem, maybe there's some racism inherent in this discussion and maybe we shouldn't be talking about it. And then it turned out there was briefings of the Prime Minister, if you go back to 2019 annual report from the Parliamentary Committee on National Security, they warned this government, it was shared by uh, David McGuinty, that there was a high likelihood of foreign interference in Canadian elections. And so it just kind of, and it sort of being the Prime Minister, watching him be dragged to doing something has really made him look, I think, like he's trying to hide something. I don't know. It's been a little painful to watch. I don't, I, you know, I think at this point they have to do something better than a special rapporteur because really, if you don't, if you don't have a, a committee of parliament looking into it, after all the time it's taken for him to get here, kicking and screaming, I think it really doesn't 
help him look like he's trying to be transparent and nonpartisan about it. It needs to be transparent. Absolutely. There is nothing more important than protecting our democracy. And I think for the prime minister kind of to rescue a little bit of um, <coughs> dignity in this thing, I don't think he can appear to be appointing someone who will be ultimately interpreted um, as as close to the government or owing the government something. And I don't think the result will be something Canadians feel like they can have confidence in. But yeah, it's, that's it's so interesting because... Is, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, that's okay. Well, I was just going to say, my understanding is, as Daryl said, there are committees of parliament that are going to be looking into this as well. Two committees, I think. So um, so it's, it's a combination yeah. of, um, of <laughs> investigations that's going to happen. And if there is... You know, if there is a um, uh, an inquiry recommended, the prime minister has said publicly that uh, that he will do that. So I think that's some protection, Christy, for um, you know the uh, the the integrity of the process. I think the latter the, is the certainly kind of, true if you ask yeah, to do a public inquiry. But a parliamentary committee will be a liberal-dominated committee or a liberal NDP-dominated committee. So I'm not sure that you know it doesn't. It's not the the level of, I think, accountability um, that is required here. And Kathleen, I think you're right. You know, he could he could appoint a special um, or a, a, an independent inquiry at some point. I don't know why he wouldn't do it just now and, you know, make it apparent to Canadians that he is trying to do the right thing here, finally. Well, let, let me just interject and bring Daryl in for a second, because uh, I was going to say that it, it's interesting that I mean, the, the merits of the actual mechanism three weeks ago, I think, would have been a, a substantive and real discussion. I had Fred mm -hmm. Delorean, the manager of the 2021 campaign, of course, at the heart of all of this for the Conservatives. And he's like, I don't, he thinks public, the public inquiry will be a, a lot of theater. He said NSACOP, that's the National Security uh, Committee, does have the tools. But he also acknowledged, like, the story has run away, right? Like, it, it has its own legs now. Uh, Daryl, and, and beyond, uh, you know, it, it may not be the perfect policy solution to conduct an inquiry, but there is sort of like a narrative that's emerged that both the NDP and the Conservatives are calling out the, the Liberals saying they, it looks like you have something to hide, even though we don't know that for a fact, but it's just like the appearance of it all may necessitate something different than even as Kathleen pointed out, what they announced maybe could have worked better three weeks ago or two weeks ago. Yeah, no, I agree with that. This was a this was a story that certainly had legs, and it and it moved substantially over the last uh, uh, few weeks. Uh, and I think there are actually two issues of trust here. One is uh, you know the ultimate uh, issue of trust in in the fairness of uh, elections in the in the country. But the other one, and I think the one that's more damaging, is the whole question of trust in the government itself and whether or not people will trust. Um, uh, any process that they don't see as being open and transparent. And that's the one that uh, can really damage the, uh, the credibility of the government. I also wanted to get uh, everyone's take. We just have a few minutes left, but Christy, uh, the opposition today, there were there was an exchange between Michael Cooper in committee and Melanie Jolie. My, Mr. Co I think we have it. I'll play it for you really quickly. You've talked tough with your... Uh, Beijing counterpart, so you say, uh, you even stared into his eyes. I'm sure he was very intimidated. I want to comment on your question, and particularly the beginning. It's absolutely devastating that that sort of frame of reference would be used in this way. They're called microaggressions, but they don't feel very micro. That was completely unacceptable unacceptable behavior for every woman that has ever taken her place in this house. And I demand an apology. There's a lot of things around this place that make me puke in my mouth often. I don't even know what to say about the last comment. Uh, Mr. Cooper <laughs> did say today just recently that his comments had nothing to do with the minister's gender and everything to do with the lack of action by her and her government to hold the regime in Beijing accountable. Uh, your quick thoughts on that and sort of the, the cr criticism at times that Mr. Polyev is, you know, in you know essentially um, accusing Mr. Uh, Trudeau of being, uh, you know, treasonous or, or m more in favor of foreign interests. Do you think that runs the risk of going too far? Um, well, well, are, well, if we're talking about uh, Mr. Cooper's comments, I would say yes. I mean, this is what this is how sexism cloaks itself in public discourse all the time. Is just well, you know, I would have said the same thing to a guy. Well, you didn't, and obviously those words and the way that he used them, the way that he framed it up, was intentional to try and diminish 
uh, Minister Jolie is a woman, no matter, regardless of what you think of her and the way she's done her job, that is totally inappropriate <laughs> way to question a Minister of the Crown. I just, I saw that, I heard it, and I thought, I, oh, you know, it, it still hasn't gotten better. <sighs> Okay, I gotta leave it there. I'm sorry, we're out of time. We'll pick this discussion up next week. Christy Clark, Kathleen Wynn, and Daryl Dexter, thanks so much to all three of you.